Hello everyone and I hope you're doing very well. Today we're looking at downloading TechView, installing it, setting it up and then using it to analyze whatever you analyze, whatever you want to analyze in DCS world, your mission, your dogfight, your bombing run, whatever. Okay, so first things first, let's open up a browser. Uh, ping, ping. Go to a search engine of your choice. Definitely doesn't have to be this one. Um, TechView, whoops. Uh, TechView works with most uh, flight simulators as well as uh, DCS, but obviously we're only DCS. Uh, TechView download, latest version. Okay, just double check everything, make sure it's a genuine site and everything. Okay, latest uh, download links, latest version, TechView 1.7.6. I believe there's a free version and a paid version. Most of the guys in the Grim Reapers have got the paid version. I've got the free version. Now the reason is, and this is going to sound a bit stupid, I can't actually get TechView to work properly. I install it, I've tested it, I've done everything, but for some reason, just on my computer, it doesn't work. Very, very strange. Um, so I can't actually generate TechView files. So when you see me using TechView in the videos that I do, then I'm actually, I've actually copied someone else's file, someone else who was in the uh, game. He sent me their TechView file and I'm looking at it. But uh, I've been over with my guys and apparently I'm doing everything right. It's just something wrong with my computer so let's get on with it download links tech view um, i have read and agreed to the terms uh, yes definitely go and read all that lot but i'm not going to bother this case uh, download now uh, this file looks like it doesn't have a preview we can show you let's just download it let's save it as uh, downloads save let's wait for that to download okay that appears to be done Let's cancel all this. Get out of there. Let's go into our downloads area. There it is. It appears to be an application, so let's press that. Okay, TechView installation. Welcome to the TechView. Let's have a look at options, shall we? So TechView will be installed to the following folder, D Drive TechView. So let me, I've already got an older version installed. Let me quickly go and find where my old one is installed. It is D drive tack view tack view. So yep, that's fine. That's apparently where it wants to go. And just check everything looks okay. Okay, install. Okay, installation successful. I don't want to launch yet, I want to quit because we've got to go and check out our options in DCS world to make sure we allow output for the tack view. So what happens is uh, the DCS world mission is running, and when it's running, the tack view um, can hook in to that DCS mission and take out data. From that mission um, all the data it needs like um, locations of aircraft missiles and all the other stuff and uh, we have to and that make sure we enable that in DS dcs world for it to work okay we're in now we're going to go to options going to go to special I'm going to search down here for tack for you let me know if you can see it There he is. TechView. Ba ba ba. Right. So TechView. Uh, so that's record flight data. So we need to make sure that's checked, obviously. Create one file for each network client. We do not want that. If you did that, then it would create a separate file for each player that's on your uh, multiplayer server, which you don't want. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. Okay, and as well as that, we've got all these other options that we can use. Now, as far as I'm aware, none of the other guys chained any of this stuff. We're just going to leave it to default. But if it's there, but if you want to have a look through, you've got these uh, yellow explanations that uh, show pretty well what everything does. So let's go OK to that. So next, I'm going to go and do a multiplayer mission. I'm pretty sure that TacView works with single player as well. I've never really tried it, to be honest. never seen any need to try it. But if I go to multiplayer here... And um, I could go to any of these public servers here. Now, just be a little bit careful because some of these different ser public servers will have different things set up regards to what uh, how TechView will function. And so let's have a li little look at example. I'm going to click on that Chinese one there. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. And 
So there are some things that allows you to export into TacView, some things it won't allow you. So this particular server will allow object exports, the planes, the missiles, the stuff. It will allow player exports, so presumably that's uh, client players in the server, and but it will not allow sensor export, which is radars and whatnot, I believe. So some stuff will appear in your TacView, but some won't. Let's have another look. We've got two servers. Let's have a look at our server. Uh, so Auntie server allows everything. So the TacView will be more populated. For our example, we're just going to make our own server. So we're going to click new server. Dogfight pursuits will do. Let's start. And another thing I've just remembered is if you do are doing multiplayer servers like this, there's often a 10 minute delay um, in the output that it's going to send to the uh, TacView. So the way around that is either you run the mission excuse me, you run the mission 10 minutes longer than you actually need to see and that's one way around it or you can actually turn the 10 minute delay off on your computer assuming that you are hosting the multiplayer and you have that ability. Now for memory I can't actually remember where you do that but if you can look that up that is something you can do regards hosting a multiplayer server. Right, so I'm gonna, just going to jump in an aeroplane that one will do. Let's have a little fly around populate our um, our attack view file okay that's that now I'm gonna exit I can equip to desktop there's nothing else I need to do in DTS now Okay, so that's going to see where that saved that uh, TacView file for us. So we're going to come into here, we're going to go to C Drive, we're going to go to Users, we're going to go to My Particular User, your one will be different of course. Save Games, DCS, uh, Tracks, Multiplayer, and that's it there. TacView, a number that I don't understand, probably the date or something. Um, and DTS, Dogfight Pursuits, that was the mission we loaded up, it's got today's date and now's time. One thing you'll notice is, is that it's only one kilobyte and that's because there's just this weird bug with my PC where it will create the TacView file but it won't actually populate it. We've never found a way around it and we're probably never going to find a way around it but everyone else who installs TacView it just seems to work for them and this file will populate fine um, with the data. Now we don't actually, uh, what you can do I think, let's see if you can just click on this file to load it up. Okay, so you can do that and it will load up um, automatically, that's fine. But what you most people do is we we'll just use the link from the desktop. And you need to configure where it wants to open the files from. So we're going to go to this guy here, options, and I believe it's this one here, where the files are coming from. We're going to tell them it's going to be C drive, users, me, uh, save games there tracks uh, multiplayer okay now we're gonna go open <laughs> and it's not remembered but well it's supposed to uh, and then we're gonna go to so find it again now so C drive users me at that and tracks multiplayer and it's this one dogfight and you see it's got the right area and space but it's not going to have uh, my aeroplane it's not going to be flying a bell because like I said for whatever reason my DCS refuses to populate my TACVIEW file so that's okay what we're going to do instead then is go and get a TACVIEW file from one of the guys uh, of the last mission that we did and we'll show how we can edit that so let's cross this off for now and let's go and find it. I put it in here, and that's that TacView file there. This is one from Auntie's machine. You see, it's been populated at 60 megabytes. Let's press that. Okay, zoomed in on this bit of the world, and now we've got all of our elements, all the ships, all the ground units, and all the aircraft, the missiles, everything that was in our mission. Now there are lots of options we can do, but I'm just going to look at the typical ones that I would use. So first of all to note, we've got our timeline bar down here. So we can move our timeline to any point of the mission, we can go forward and we can go backwards. It has little markers here along that you can see, Now I'm not sure what they are, but they're usually things when someone gets shot or someone spawns in, a new aircraft spawns in or takes off, something like that. Uh, a relevant action happens, okay? 
Uh, so we can go up and down to our heart's desire. Next, uh, let's have a little zoom um, to this action that's going to happen here. There are different ways of doing it. So first of all, we can have we can have external view. This will ensure that the view follows a particular vehicle. And if to choose that particular vehicle, we're going to press left control and left click on the vehicle. Now it's centered on that vehicle. The screen will move wherever that vehicle goes, and we can see that by doing this. Look, see. And we can zoom in and out with mouse scroll in and out. It's all set up automatically. You won't need to set anything up. And then we can move that along. You can see it follows this guy here. Okay. Next, if we wanted to do free view where we were, the camera was not locked to anything, we'd press this. And if we now move this along, then it does not follow them. And we can left click and drag to point the camera wherever we want. We can zoom out and zoom out in with the scroll wheel. And if we press uh, right click, it just does the same as left click by the looks of things. So that's that. Next, we've got satellite view. And this is just, as you can imagine, a top view that you can zoom in. And I don't think it follows anything, does it? No, it doesn't follow anything. OK, usually I just use this and this. You've also got cockpit view here. And uh, I didn't realize track I was in here. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to test it here. So I can press cockpit view of this particular aeroplane we've got selected and you can see it's not the real cockpit of the uh, whatever we're looking at, uh, the Vigan or whatever I've selected. It's the um, tack view style cockpit but it's got everything uh, that you're going to need and I could choose a different plane here. I could down left control and left click on this guy and now I'm looking through his cockpit. You see? So that's a really useful tool. Um, to actually play the mission through you've got your play bar here so you can press play and you can speed it up or slow it down. We're currently at one to one speed. Uh, if we wanted to speed it up, we're now times two, times four, or we could go reverse, half or quarter. Okay, here is our time. Uh, now, bear in mind that doesn't always necessarily link up with the DCS mission. I don't know why. It's maybe a bug. It may be something I don't understand. But it's, it, this says 11.26, but in the mission it was 4 p.m., something like that. So just bear in mind that. Okay, next we'd better have a look at the trail. So we're going to go ping. All aircraft leave a trail uh, behind them on tack view, so you can help study their movements. You can change the size of that trail or tail with this guy here. I can move it down or move it up. And you generally, generally want a tail of about that size. So we've got some view options now. Do we want to display the object's height? Uh, you will always want to do that. I don't know why you'd want to turn it off, but you could turn it off like that if you wanted. And what else have we got? If I... Uh, Booth this small uh, pick down box here. I've never actually seen this before. I don't know if it's something new or not, but it's something. It's basically we're asking it what this uh, fill in. If you see the guy we've got selected here has a fill underneath his height, and we can ask what that fill wants to represent. So if it wanted to represent speed, then because it's very dark because he's very fast at the moment, and if we wanted to represent uh, turn rate, he's not really turning much turn rate. It'll go a lot lighter. Um, never really seen the point of that. So. But that's a thing. Uh, next, we've got display selected objects and direction. So I'm going to have to zoom in a bit. And you can see we've got his datum line there where the aircraft is pointing. And we can have that on or we can have that off. And it also shows the guy's lift vector. Next, we can show if we want to show the guy's uh, ID tag here and what information we want to show on the guy's ID tag. So this is only for an aircraft that we've got selected. You can see these aircraft here don't have it unless we hover the mouse above them and then we do have it. So do we want to show it? Yes or no? Next, what do we want to populate it with? And I'm just going to have to remember this. We've got all sorts of stuff we can do here. But here, selected objects label, we can show all the things that you want to show in it. And these are the ones that I find particularly useful. Um, ATC, so that's the altitude above sea level, the VS, the vertical speed, and the MAC. Uh, we've got the speed, true air speed. We've got the altitude, ASL. I'm not sure where we've got the double doubt, but that's just for some reason I've got that. The angle of attack, the G-force, and the turn rate. If we go and have a look at that, you can see his, that's his altitude there in that, uh, hundreds of uh, feet. Uh, that's his, his descending, that's his speed in Mac, true air speed uh, in knots, ASL, but this time in single units, angle of attack in degrees, G in G, and turn rate in degrees per second. Those, But you can have whatever you like. And there's other things you can add, but those are the only things I've ever played with. And if you want to see what unselected aircraft can have on them, uh, so aircraft that aren't selected, you, I've put altitude and speed, 
Um, so if I spam around here, you can see these guys who are a little bit closer, we can see their altitude and their speed, and if I hover above them, then I get the full whack there. So that's how you set those labels up. Next, uh, this is Display SAM Lethal Range, so I'll click that on there. So this is what it considers the lethal range for the SAMs. Now those aren't particularly accurate because the reality is the lethal range of a SAM is depending on the aspect, the height, the speed of the aircraft that we're talking about. So it's just a very, very, very rough guess, um, uh, if, if you like. Next, we've got display radar locks when available. And, well, there's not much to say. It, it shows when a radar's locked. I'm not sure I'm going to have the ability to show you that. Let me just have a look. I don't think I can show you that. Uh, what have we got here? Scale up automatically distant objects. So, you know, that guy's obviously out of scale, so it's scaling up so that we can see it okay. Shortcuts, don't know what that is. So next we'll want to select different aircraft to focus on. And I've already showed you to select an aircraft left uh, control and left click to click on this guy or that guy or that guy. And back to wherever it is, that guy. Okay. And that uh, as well as um, giving this object uh, here, we can also add to telemetry, which is like this box here, but lots more stuff. Now if we wanted to go to that, we go to... Uh, this guy here, analysis, we can add telemetry 1 and telemetry 2. It's all interesting, also raw telemetry, various charts that you can do if you're a bit more into it, but that's further than I actually go. So I've got two telemetry set up, and basically you have the ability to select two aircraft at once. Here is aircraft 1. We can select it by either going down the list like this, and it can also be missiles and stuff like that, or control and left click, like I said. And then we can select aircraft 2, which we can do the list like this, or we can go left control and right click on our left control and right click that guy there, whoever that is. And that's given us our comparison. So we've now got this guy with his full details, this guy with his full details, it gives him his name. Telemetry 1 is populated with this guy. Telemetry 2 is populated with trash there. And you've got more information you can get down there. Um, and then we've got our dogfight line, this green line here. It's telling us the distance between the two and the relationship um, of this guy to this guy. So he's 145 degrees right. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can explain that. That's, I believe, this guy here's angle compared to this guy's here angle. Uh, uh, the aspect angle, there we go. And telling that he's flanking. Uh, if we want to go into dogfight mode, we press this button here. Just have interest, I'm going to see what's here. Oh, there's different ones you can do, look. But I just leave it on the basic one, click on dogfight mode here. And what that does is it centers the camera around the center of the green line. So if I were then to zoom forward, you see, it always keeps us in this cool dogfight mode, so we don't have to keep panning the camera around. And we can keep following these guys all the time until one of them dies, and then it turns itself off, okay? So that's that. Um, and we've got that there. So that's shown that. Uh, and that's it. That's everything I use to analyze the uh, the missions. That's all of the tools that I use. There's nothing more I think you really need. But because we've got time, why don't we go and have a little look through the menu? So we've got the open... Um, now we're going to export telemetry. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you may want to analyze the data in your own uh, subroutine or something, your own algorithm. Uh, we've got online debriefing. Now this is, if you buy the paid version, like the other guys have got, you can have a multiplayer version of this where you all see the same thing. Now, I haven't got that because mine's not working properly, as you saw, but the other guys can do that. Real-time telemetry. I believe that's where you can actually watch a match, a DCS match that's actually happening live. Um, so for well, obvious reasons, if you want to watch it uh, from the TAC view rather than the actual DCS external view, that's something you can do in multiplayer. Remote controls, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, we've got the analysis here, the different analyses and all kinds of things. Uh, you know, it goes beyond what I'm interested in. Don't know what any of that stuff is. It's all beyond me. Options, so all the different stuff you can set, you know, what kind of units you want, uh, position, what kind of language you want it in, uh, different terrain stuff to suit uh, typical things. So I should have clicked DCS World by the look of it. Let's see what happens if I do that. It must configure it slightly more for DCS World. It's an interesting thing. Um, terrain display mode, 3D, 3D, underwater, flat. So that's something you want ticked on. You want ACMI files associated with TACView, so you can just double-click on them. 
always display bullseye, display cockpit instruments. I've never seen that before. I've turned that on now. Let's go and have a look. Oh, look at that. I haven't seen that before. That's pretty cool, right? Mm. I guess that's pretty cool. Never seen it before. Maybe it'll just get in your way, actually, thinking about it. But We'll try it, see what happens. And that's all I want to say. Like, there's a little bit more to it, but that's all I'm going to say. I hope that helps everyone, and see you later.